In Kant's critique of judgment, the idea that beauty must be indifferent to the critic is introduced. Kant argued that beauty is not dependent on a purpose of benefit, but rather beauty arises from disinterested pleasure. In the first moment of the critique of judgment, Kant says, Interest is what we call the liking we connect with the presentation of an object's existence. Hence, such a liking always refers to at once to our power of desire, either as the basis that determines it, or at any rate as necessarily connected with that determining basis. Interest is our liking for an object that is determined by our desire. When we have interest in an object, we are drawn to it because it satisfies a desire. Therefore, disinterested pleasure is when we experience pleasure that is not influenced by personal interest of pleasure. It is pleasure that arises purely from our perception of the object in absence of any ulterior motives. Morality cannot be used to critique beauty because the judgment is morality is interested, while the judgment of beauty is disinterested. In Kant's groundwork for the metaphysic of morals, he argues that morality is derived from logic and obligation. It is based on a concept called the categorical imperative, which states that a moral action should only be acted upon if the maxim of the action ought to be a universal law. The judgment of morality is not disinterested because it is concerned with moral and social issues that are of interest to the critic. Beauty has no foundation in reason or universal principles, unlike morality. Beauty is a product of our senses and pleasure, therefore it is a subjective experience. By applying our judgment of morality to a judgment of beauty, we would be applying our moral obligations to our experience of pleasure. Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon is a depiction of five nude prostitutes standing seven feet tall in a brothel in Spain's famous Cara d'Avignon. It is known as the first painting in a style called Cubism. Cubism is characterized by the use of geometric shapes and fragmented forms. The objects being painted are often broken down into geometric shapes and then reassembled in abstract ways. As you can see, the women depicted in Lester Moiselle's Davignon are depicted with an exaggerated, rigid and fragmented form. The faces of the women are distorted and the rightmost two have faces that are modeled to resemble African masks. The woman in the middle and to her right are staring directly at the viewer while the other women are looking off into various directions. Upon revealing the painting, Picasso received criticism for its lack or morality and depiction of sexuality. The innovative use of cubism and depiction of a brothel challenged the traditional style in which female nudity was portrayed. Many people found the display of female nudity in a non-traditional manner to be provocative and morally repulsive due to the overpresentation of female nudity and sexuality. The former director of the Fleming Museum of Art, Janie Cohen said these women are looking right at us, and that what was so outrageous about the painting, it frightened people, it made them angry. The stare of the prostitutes challenges the traditional male gaze. The male gaze is the act of depicting women as objects of male desire. The larger-than-life women staring at the viewer overthrows the traditional power dynamic between the viewer and the painting. Instead of the women looking elsewhere and appearing passive, they look directly into the viewer which some viewers found challenging and confrontational. 
The critiques of Lester Moiselle's Davignon are oftentimes based on morality. The explicit depiction of female sexuality was considered morally repulsive and upset many critics and viewers of the painting. By using morality in their critique of Lester Moiselle's Davignon, the critiques and viewers are no longer indifferent to the painting. They are expecting the painting to conform to their moral views whom reflect their desires and interest for society. By using morality to judge a painting such as Lester Moiselle's Davignon, we inhibit our ability to fully perceiving the details of the painting since we had focus on the qualities of the painting that challenge or support our moral values. For example, by critiquing it for the sexual nature of the painting, we had focus on the physical characteristics of the prostitutes. This can be overwhelming to the viewer and can cause them ignore the possible experience of pleasure from the beauty of the painting. If the judgment of beauty was rooted in morality, it would be impossible for many people to view Lester Moiselle's Davignon as beautiful. Beauty must be judged without morality because of this. If the judgment of morals is used in the judgment of beauty, then the judgment of beauty becomes a product of the judgment of morality instead of a product of the senses and pleasure.